So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dominic. I am here to post this event today at 4 p.m. No, Thursday, 13 July 2023. So today's topic is very, very extremely interesting. People from uh, a safety or fire. What a computer vision can do to enhance the fire safety in a building. This subject is probably not many covered. People are in the development of uh, AI. I have not seen anybody talking on the subject called fire safety using your CCTV camera. So today we are going to talk about uh, applications and innovations. And uh, most of us know, you know, what is this uh, computer vision? I'm sure everybody who's here, everybody knows, but however, I would like to touch upon what is computer vision. It's a field of artificial intelligence that focuses on enabling computer to understand and interpret visual information from images or videos. Those videos that you're streaming every day through uh, cameras in your complex, the CCTVs that you have, you're getting tons of images. Now, how are you converting those images uh, which you take as a, you know, artificial intelligence? So it involves developing an algorithm and technique that allows computers to extract meaningful insight from visual data. I mean to say that you want specific information. It could be a fire, it could be smoke, or it could be anything. You tell it. Uh, tell the computer, so this is what I need. So they develop that. So similar to how human perceive and interpret visual information. Uh, this is called uh, computer vision. Today, it has a potential to enhance fire and safety measures by providing early detection, proactive monitoring, assisting in emergency response. It enables automation efficiency and accuracy in identifying potential hazards, thereby reducing the risk associated with fire and improving overall safety. Today, I have experts, Mr. Vamshi and Srini, who is going to talk on this subject. And I introduce myself. I'm Dominic, you know, the founder of Fire and Security of India, FSCI, involved in fire industry almost 34 years now. And uh, you know now very actively involved in enhancing the knowledge on national electrical code in the, in India. We're traveling length and breadth of the country. We are tied up with Bureau of Indian Standard in, to ensure that everybody is aware of standards and codes. So I would like to introduce the company called Durak. Durak. If you see in our past more than 10 to 12 webinar, we've been covering on various aspects, how to manage warehouse. And we are talking about beyond surveillance. It is not just looking at a camera and capturing and recording. And you know, again, after 30 days, you again you record those incidents. How do we enhance the current CCTV system in your building? So Durang actually helps businesses and the organization to maximize the potential of the surveillance cameras. To do this, they have built a secure, a reliable, and cost-effective cost -effective video platform that provides users with deep, intelligent analytics insight in a real time, which is called a video management system. They founded in 2015 gathered highly talented global team to create the cloud-based platform. Durang continuously innovative video streaming and storage technology offers to client that ultimate in video surveillance functionality delivered seamlessly from the cloud. Durang headquartered in Nashville, USA. They are in the center in Helsinki, Finland. The development and global support is based out of Hyderabad, India. 
that's durang for you ladies and gentlemen and my friend srini who is a speaker today a wonderful human being who travels length and breadth today is based out of delhi addressing bunch of intellectuals there and talking about how to secure the facility we call him dp he has 22 years of diverse experience in various industry ranging from financial market real estate automobile and information technology his global work experience and extensive travel gave him keen understanding on world markets his passion has been to identify create innovate product and solution and make them available to the market that need them his passion for developing innovative ideas has made him a serial entrepreneur founding and advising many startup companies is a co-founder of CRO of Durang Inc the leading provider of video surveillance and analytic as a service he has been instrumental in shaping the product design and features and providing market insight being a voracious reader and extensive traveler he is a strong believer in the concept of innovation innovative ideas coupled with strategic implementation and commercialization lead to create jobs and wealth this mantra can lead is this mantra can lead corporate india to become world economic leader that srini for you thank you dominic thank you thank you srini you're welcome and we have a techno champion vamshi krishna who is the ceo of duram vamshi has 25 years of cross functional management experience in project management operation technology infrastructure people and customer management as an extensive experience dealing with cross culture teams and customers from across the globe including us europe south africa and middle east as a head of operation of duram for the past 8 years he has overseen a development implementation and support of the cutting edge of durang vision smart surveillance solution with a strong focus on quality he has spearheaded the implementation iso 9001 and iso 27001 as a technical evangelist he advocates and helps customers to benefit from and understand the limitation of the technological innovation and surveillance so we have two speakers and i consider everyone here today are also part of this uh, discussion you are not a, just a mute a participant so i requested my colleague lakshmi uh, to let you know if you, when you raise your hand which means you are ready to ask questions to any or any one of us here and let's make this webinar as an interactive webinar more like a panel discussion understand throw your ideas something that you have not seen in the presentation maybe and adds a lot of value so we keep discussing this as we go so i now welcome both srini and uh, vamshi to the stage thank you thank you dominic um thanks for the uh, wonderful introduction of the computer vision uh, you know giving giving a definition uh, far beyond what we usually give as a technical team you know generalizing the uh, statement of computer vision is always a very interesting thing like you said it's um, it's all encompassing now uh, it's it's not just um, you know to a specific area of interest the computer vision has now gone beyond surveillance it has gone beyond just image processing and uh, beyond uh, you know analyzing uh, small bits and pieces of uh, videos to give recommendations like if you take uh, you know youtube a uh, lot of times you get a lot of ai recommendations from the videos if you watch one you get a series of another ones so those those days are gone today there is a lot of functional importance for the video uh, analytics uh, with the computer vision it can solve a lot of problems but like i said you know you also mentioned and vamshi also knows about this and then he always highlights about some of the li limitations that technology can pose 
before we aggressively go into it. There will be some limitations in any technology when the evolution happens, right? So there are well-built existing systems that are catering to the existing requirements, right? But at every generation of technology, there, is, there will be a change, there will be a progress. And that progress can be incremental or it can be drastic uh, and disruptive. But if we see in the fire environment, fire protection, fire safety, and fire mitigation, these are some of the very delicate areas where you need to have a very safe and incremental progress in the implementation of new technologies. We want to be very cautious about that. You have a lot of IoT devices that are there. You have graphic softwares are there. You have a lot of um, you know sensors are there. So coexisting with that ecosystem and enhancing with the computer vision is what our scope and focus is. We are not trying to replace anything that is existing because they've been proven systems, so to say, right? They are the they are the ones which are actually giving a lot of inputs to you, to the quick response teams, but. There is a lot of scope for enhancement with the vision because most of these implemented systems as of now doesn't have vision opportunity. So we add that vision uh, to the existing systems and we fusion the future technologies with the existing technologies and make it as a coexisting ecosystem for the better prevention of uh, you know, fire and uh, uh, saving the lives for the, for the future. So having said that, I would request Vamshi to start the presentation and then we'll answer any questions. And by the way, you know, it's a good thing that you mentioned that it's an interactive session. A lot of times we come from different technologies. Our technological focus is on the computer vision. We are not experts in the fire. You know, Dominic, you and a lot of the participants, they are the experts in the fire, but we come from away from the functional area of fire, but we are trying to prevent and you know provide a better technology for that. So always the inputs will help us and enhance our solution to integrate with the existing ones and then make it as a better you know environment for the prevention of the fire and then uh, create safe environments. Yep. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction, sir. I think uh, that sets the stage to definitely mention uh, what is the Durank vision solution about? Because as we said, we would like to give a vision to all the data that you probably are already getting from the sensor. So we provide the eyes and a bit of a brain along with the eye uh, to be able to analyze that video data as well. So that is what we will uh, do. So let me just share uh, my screen here. As Dominic uh, mentioned, we started off uh, Durank um, few years back in 2015 with the idea to do more with surveillance. And we will just briefly cover uh, what we mean by that before getting into the specifics of uh, uh, how uh, it will be applicable to the fire and safety area. So I will take a few minutes of your time to explain about what the solution is and how it generally evolved and applies in general uh, with, with computer vision. And, and then we will get into the specifics of it. So typically, you know, CCTV, when we look at it, uh, it, it's basically used for evidence management. All we do is uh, set up cameras, define what is the number of days of storage that will be required for these cameras, uh, where all you need to have access, coverage, where all the coverage is required, for example, how many days of storage required for each camera. Based on that, you will have the planning done, have the connectivity established, define what kind of cameras you would need, maybe some um, fire resistance cameras, some vandal resistance cameras, dome cameras, whatever type of cameras that you would have. But depending on the need and requirement, you would have various types of uh, these cameras uh, in, in the premises. And somebody may be monitoring, uh, depending on the type of the business and the requirement. Uh, maybe some people are monitoring it 24 by 7, or some people uh, are not, and, and uh, only uh, do investigation. If some incident happens, then you go back, check the recordings, and try to investigate and gather evidence to take uh, action. So that is how typically we know of CCTV, uh, as we know. Right. But then we, as I said, we wanted to do more with surveillance. And by that more, uh, let me explain with a brief video of, of what we mean by that. 
So as I said, there would be various types of cameras depending on the type of functionality you would need. There may be uh, flare cameras, you know, kind of things. So any type of camera, uh, make and model, you should be able to bring into the single platform for live monitoring, irrespective of the type of the camera, make and model of camera. So that gives you the flexibility to use appropriate cameras for the appropriate functionality that you need to derive from that particular um, camera. So it gives you that flexibility, uh, one single platform to connect to any types of um, these cameras is the first aspect of it. So once you have these cameras, the ability to logically group the cameras, depending on your requirement, so logical grouping. So with a single login, maybe um, a pathway that you want to cover, uh, the cameras can be grouped, all of those cameras. Maybe cameras of all the five exits can be grouped together. So depending on your requirement, you, know, you, you should be able to group these cameras to quickly review uh, or monitor those cameras. So this is part of the video management system portion of the solution, the ability to connect cameras, provide a required number of days of storage. And it's not that every camera will have the same number of days of storage. Depending on your need, you can specify that specific cameras need to have seven days of storage, some 30 days, some 180 days. Depending on your need, you should be able to specify at an individual camera level, not as a bulk, you know, depending on your storage. Yeah, if you add more storage, all the cameras get the same number of days of storage. No, we have evolved from that. A, uh, from that area. So we now can uh, specify at individual camera level, the lot of parameters for that camera, what resolution you would need from, for those cameras, how many days of storage you would need from cameras, who all should have access to this camera. You may have multiple users, security personnel will be there, uh, then uh, administrators will be there. Depending on who it is, you should be able to give specific users access to specific cameras only. So that, that portion is the first portion of the solution, which is the video management system uh, of the thing. And once you have that, what Durang allows you is to uh, apply any video analytic on top of any camera. And you can also run multiple analytics on the same camera as well. We will uh, explain that. But typically the ability to apply or configure whatever analytic that you would like to apply. And all these analytics are based on artificial intelligence and computer vision neural network technologies. So to, in order to eliminate any false alarms that you would receive. So that's what we focus on. All these analytics run on the GPU architectures. So you should be able to pick up a particular analytic that you would like to apply on a camera, whether it is um, smoke and fire detection, whether it is counting of the number of people to understand the occupancy, uh, whether to see uh, if there is an object missing, like if any missing fire extinguishers, for example, are somebody blocking a fire exit or are some objects blocking a fire exit. Any type of these things you know, can be there. You should be able to apply these analytics on specific uh, cameras. With the specifying the area of interest, you can define the zone within this area. This is what I'm looking for and specify whether you want to apply this analytic 24 by 7 uh, so, so that the system keeps monitoring that camera feed, analyzing that camera feed all the time or specific periods of the time, uh, only during the night, intrusion detection during the night, for example, or crowd formation during the night. When any event is triggered, when the system keeps checking for the analyzing the feed, if any event is triggered that is notified in real time uh, to the command center, as well as you, know, you will have uh, reports uh, built in in terms of the, these events the times that these events are occurring, etc. So a lot of analysis is possible uh, based on the events that get triggered. So the, the solution to rank vision is built on the two parameters of the video management and integrated video management and video analytics solution is what uh, Durank vision is about. Just a, a overview, like what we spoke, uh, the input process output, the IPO, the Durang uh, input process output is, the input can be coming from various types of cameras. They could be fixed cameras. They could be cameras that you mount on, uh, on, on cranes. They could be cam for construction monitoring scenario, for example. Or there could be cameras that you um, monitor on the drones uh, for forest fires, for example, or you know, understanding uh, or uh, handling with uh, you know, natural disasters. So it could be drone mount camera, it could be body worn cameras or helmet mount cameras, any type of camera to be able to bring into the platform for centralized monitoring review and remote monitoring purposes and also analysis. So you can store all these camera data as well and analyze this data and give you insights as well. So when this, uh, all the camera feeds that come into the platform, they can be monitored from a central command center. 
So it could have a video wall that monitors this. You, whenever there is an alert that is triggered, the alert can come on, on the screen as a pop-up on the command center. So you can take action on it. So there is a possibility to track all these actions uh, that you take and what action has been taken can be recorded. So that portion is there as part of the command center. Then not only a fixed command center, but command center on the go. So you are uh, handheld devices or mobile devices become your command control centers because you can receive alerts directly on WhatsApp, for example, if there is an incident or uh, an alert that gets triggered. You can receive that alert or, or WhatsApp with you. And you can see the live view of that camera immediately uh, when you receive the alert, etc. So your command center is, is with you all the time as well. As long as obviously, uh, depending on the you know user permissions that you give to the specific users, our, our notifications can be sent like that. And this is uh, the overall solution that Durank has built. And some of these analytics that are part of the solution uh, are few, maybe generic, not specific to the uh, to the webinar that we are talking about in terms of fire and safety. But in general, uh, we have safety, security related aspect of analytics. We have people related analytics and then vehicle related analytics uh, as a group, if you see. Yeah. Specifically from uh, the perspective of uh, people related analytics, you can measure uh, if there is any crowd that getting uh, you know, formed or you can count the number of people. Occupancy measure uh, can be done. You can detect uh, uh, fire and smoke. Obviously, we will uh, talk more about that in the subsequent slides. You can also ensure people are following the minimum distance. It could be another, not only for the uh, area of the social distancing, but even in terms of safety in, in workspace environments, whether uh, people are maintaining the distance or there is any pedestrian, um, obviously, probably getting hit with the forklift that's moving, for example. So the distance, uh, minimum distance between persons or moving vehicles, it could be. And then a vehicle related alerts, including automatic number plate detection, you know, facial recognition for attendance tracking of the people, for example, of all the employees or the staff. Uh, all those um, analytics are integrated in the uh, in the system, so you could apply any of these analytics on the existing cameras. So that's the advantage of the solution. Existing cameras can be uh, used to apply these analytics and then derive uh, insights. There is no need for specialized cameras. Obviously, there will be specific cameras for specific purposes. Uh, we will get to that. But in general, uh, for most of the analytics, 99% of the analytics, uh, any regular camera uh, could be able to provide the feed that is required uh, for us to run analytics. And, and when I say 99% of the cameras are the analytics, it could be even analog cameras. Now, all we require is the video feed uh, from the camera to be able to process the analytics. Uh, it, it cuts across, you know, the, the applications uh, cut across multiple uh, industries or verticals. Um, and obviously, fire and safety also cuts across all of these uh, verticals, whether it is uh, malls and uh, retail showrooms or, or uh, construction um, sites, or it could be places of worship, or it could be offices and residential complexes, everywhere, there, wherever there is a chance of it. Uh, we are talking about mostly, you know, indoor kind of spaces, but even outdoor spaces, may, maybe stadiums, for example, etc. So uh, public parks, all of those areas as well. Uh, the analytics will help in all the, uh, um, all across the verticals, the applications cut across multiple verticals. When we specifically look at the uh, the fire and safety aspect of it, right? So, how does it help? How does uh, the vision technology help in terms of the fire and safety? See, the vision uh, it enhances the fire and safety measures by providing early detection. That's the one aspect of it. Proactive monitoring that you can do and assisting in taking the emergency responses. Those are the three key areas. And it can also enable automation, uh, bring in efficiencies and accuracies in terms of identifying potential hazards even before uh, they happen. Like, for example, uh, much before the fire is created, uh, you could detect the smoke or various types of the smoke that get formed. So it, it helps in uh, early detection of potential hazards. And thereby, you know, it reduces the risks associated with, with the fire and improving the overall safety. The way it works is that system, you know, can be trained to recognize patterns and characteristics. It's basically through machine learning, uh, we train the system to detect these characteristics of, of smoke, the patterns of the smoke. Uh, this can help in identifying the smoke generation or uh, abnormal smoke behavior, etc., which can immediately alert the administrators for potential fire hazards, even before the flames are visible. 
We, by identifying the signs of fire such as smoke or flames and by detecting fires at the early stage, it enables the rapid response teams to you know, quickly take action and minimize the potential uh, damage. This is so where, that, um, uh, sorry, Umshi, I just want to add one point here. Sure. This is where, uh, you know, a lot of times the, um, uh, it's, it's an enhancement or an add-on uh, because a lot of times the smoke that reaches to the spot detector or, uh, you know, the smoke uh, get evaluated by the aspiration, uh, you know, detector. So some of those things do take some time. Uh, and most of the time, you know, when it reaches to the top of the uh, roof, uh, by the time there is some kind of a damage is already started, uh, computer vision can actually analyze that uh, smoke pattern and, uh, you know, at, at a, a little bit early than, uh, you know, what it can reach to the spot detector, it can actually give you the alarm so that, uh, uh, the camera of that location is also given as a live feed. So you know you can assess it immediately and then start taking, uh, you know, responses. It may not be exactly, uh, you know, doing what the spot detector is doing, but it is an enhancement and also it's an additional add-on uh, to do an early detection. Yep. So... Uh... In terms of the visualization, right? When we speak about uh, the data that you get, how how do you visualize that where it is happening? The system provides you the capability to upload the the floor plans, the building plans, and the floor plan can be up uploaded in the system. You can specify where the camera positionings are, where the coverage is, and if at all uh, any threat is detected, a potential uh, threat or smoke is detected uh, by within any of these cameras immediately the early warnings alerts can be triggered and they get onto the command center uh, to notify so that you will have immediate access to not only that camera, but the ability to quickly review the proximity cameras, you know, the nearby cameras so that you can have access to it live in terms of uh, what is happening on the ground, gives you the complete eye. You can also see the spread of the fire. If at all, there is a fire, uh, in fact, and then you can see the spread of that fire through the progress of these cameras, you know, which you, you don't need to walk through multiple cameras, etc. You click on the camera, specifically nearby cameras also pop up there, and you will be able to see all those um, camera views to see how the fire is progressing, for example. And there are possibilities for integrations also with the, with the graphics software, uh, softwares, as well as integrations, I guess, uh, uh, you know, as I think you can talk more about uh, the graphics integration. Yeah, so, uh, you know, there is a large implementations of graphics softwares are there already in the buildings, existing buildings, a lot of them are uh, present. But, uh, you know, they, they, they actually provide uh, the view uh, visualization in uh, either 2D or 3D in terms of floor by and also building wise. Um, those, those visualizations are given in terms of a uh, graphic analysis. But to enhance that a bit uh, ahead of the graphic analysis, if you have a you know, real view of the scenario, from that particular floor, like say 40, 44th floor has got a 44th floor got a issue that is detected and then it's been notified. You need to get back into the you know our system, Durang system, which is already integrated. If if the possibility of that graphic software gives you an input, we'll definitely take that input and open up our uh, floor plan and then give you all these cameras that has been shown on the right side. Uh, and then you can you can click on each of the camera and then have the view of those uh, you know areas and then do analysis and then see what's the exact situation at that and then give the response team uh, you know quick response team to go and then mitigate the situation. So it is it is basically hand in hand in hand uh, to work together and uh, you know most of the time like I said it 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 enhances if you have a fusion or if you have a you know, collaboration between existing systems and the future systems. Computer vision, so to say, can enhance a lot of things to you, but existing systems doesn't need to be replaced overnight. So they can coexist and they can actually uh, do work together. So this is where we are working with a lot of OEMs, where OEM to OEM technology collaborations are actively happening in the back end. So we do get a lot of requests from uh, major OEMs to collaborate and work with their existing systems. And we are pretty open in terms of our approach in working with them. There's no competition to anyone. Uh, as a technology provider, 
we are we are always ready to work with existing technology partners so that's how the oem to oem collaboration is happening and hopefully that will enhance the possibilities of prevention and possibilities of early detection and possibilities of pro proactive and predictive analysis of situations that can arise so this is what is very important in the industry computer vision you know there was a question in the q and a said uh, you know uh, will there be any false alarms i mean any system will have all false alarms what is the uh, you know trade off you have 20 false alarms or you have 20% of the false alarms and if that saves a life will you be willing to take it up so that's the question you know the question is what is the trade off early uh, you know detection of situations where there are false alarms if you are okay to live with it then you know the the the, the question is let's go with that right so so there will be some false alarms i am not denying that and uh, you know what is the level of those false alarms and how do we mitigate progressively those false alarms that's what our r and d continuously works on and we try to reduce and minimize those false alarms and then try to increase the efficiencies of the system uh, that's where our oem to oem collaboration is happening in the back end very effectively yeah. to, add, to add to you know strini on this uh, particular graphic the slide that is wamshi is showing you know as we grow uh, as technology progress every fire officers who's going to attend a fire call will have a pad in the pad this information pops up okay similar to what you seeing as a graphic it says tower number 1 fourth floor this is the tower so you have so many cameras this can tell how the fire is spreading is it spreading on the right side or right wing so the evacuation could be addressed by the fire officer who is coming to attend the call you can say you can request the resident or occupant of the building to not to move on the right side please move on to the left side because he can see camera to camera how the fire is spreading and what volume the for how fast it is spreading so this can give you a real picture to the fireman was coming otherwise it's just a walkie talkie what is happening you know that but here with this you know durang visualization you can really see what is happening in the building you don't need to be there inside so but you can see this is the technology that we are talking this is something uh, the future of the uh, video imaging you know with the fireman or the fire officer even the fireman at the ground he need not really walk into the fire because if this is integrated he can see how the fire is running you can send the robot today we have a robot fire fighting you know he, he goes up and fight he can pinpoint this is accuracy which camera can tell you where exactly this fire is so if this can be integrated with fire protection fire fighting firemen fire department i think the fire incident or the volume of damage that can occur every insurance company must be very happy because there's a minimum damage to the property you know a it's wonderful a, technology that you presented uh, uh, on a good slide that's a very good point um, you know dominic you know like wamshi's previous slide uh, the live feed can be given uh, by the administrator of the system to the fire office immediately they can share a link and that link uh, enables them to uh, get into the system and while they are traveling all the way through with the fire fighting system uh, you know they have a live view of all these uh, you know cameras that are there in the uh, uh, in a building uh, not only that they can also share it to uh, management they share it to because our system doesn't restrict how many number of uh, you know users can actually access a live uh, we have a complete multicast uh, system where we only take one feed from the camera and the from the cloud we split it out to everyone so that there is no bandwidth utilization excessively done at the last mile entire bandwidth is utilized if there are 100 people watching the same camera it is done from the cloud the distribution of the feed is come done from the cloud so we effectively manage that that is our you know efficient way of giving the feed so that helps in terms of uh, you know the fire department to view it 
the local facility management and then uh, you know safety officer fire officer everybody to have the eyes with the thing and then whatever they need to do the next steps of um, you know uh, giving the messages through public address system or some other way uh, to the occupants to move around is the next step you know that that doesn't come under our focus but we give the eyes on the ground yeah yeah, exactly. That helps, you know, them to make informed decisions about the, whether it is evacuation routes or, you know, firefighting strategies that they can uh, decide the next steps appropriately through by having the eyes on the, on the ground. And in terms of um, adding uh, to, to the evacuation routes, for example, measuring the occupancy uh, of maybe on the, on a floor, maybe on a, on a building, specific floors, areas, etc. Uh, and monitoring the evacuation evacuation process as, as people exit that uh, helps you also to understand where there is more focus needs to be uh, where need, you need to deploy more uh, resources uh, in terms of the, the evacuation so where there are specific areas where there are people stuck for example so you know it, it can provide the number of people present uh, in that so it can aid in efficient evacuation planning uh, Maybe identifying the areas where people might be trapped or stranded. You, know, you can send appropriate uh, rescue operations in a timely manner. You can also remotely guide the quick response teams uh, with that information. Uh, you can have, uh, you know, definitely see when we talk about measuring the occupancies, it is important to note that uh, the measurement also requires appropriate coverage through the cameras of all the areas. Whether all these, you know, you may have multiple entry and exit points. Uh, you know, there could be fire exits, there could be staircases, etc. All these areas where there is a possibility of ingress and egress, the entry exit definitely need to be covered. And if so, you need to add more coverage through more cameras and the type of cameras that you would use at a specific uh, area. Uh, you know, if the camera itself uh, is burnt, there is nothing it can provide also. So maybe some places you have fire resistance cameras, especially on, on the specific areas of fire exits, etc. So it's important to understand those as well. So of what type of coverage and what type of cameras that you would use at specific points. And through that information that we receive from the cameras, we analyze and provide you the, the occupants information uh, for how many people are there on either floor by floor you would like or across specific floors that you would need or entire building. All that is possible to provide in real time basis of the counting so you can monitor that occupancy. Yeah, uh, if, if you look at that, um, you know, enhancement of uh, coverage. There, there may not be planned way of already done uh, covering all the exits and entries with the full coverage of the cameras. So this is a design thing that we may have to assess and then uh, you know redeploy some more uh, cameras. Because if you have 40 exits and uh, you know 25 entries, uh, unless you cover all of them, all of that 65. Uh, together, then you 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 know you are missing out the count. So how many people entered, how many people exited is what is very much important. And the next step to understand is, say if you have twenty floors, each floor where there is uh, an elevator uh, shaft opening and closing, that's where you provide the coverage. Our system will take all these cameras input and information and will give you how many people are there in each floor. How many people have already exited? How many totally entered? So to do that analysis, right, the coverage need to be increased. If you miss out one exit, and if there are 50 people left already, you are still bothered with saving 50 more people, right? They are safe, they are left, but you are still focusing on another 50 people. So you need to reinforce these cameras and then take the feed from all of those and then do the analysis. So like Wamshi said, some of the exits, fire exits and fire paths, it's a good idea to give uh, a replacement with a, you know fire resistant cameras so that in case of the fire also, you still have the view because they are not destroyed. Now, even uh, uh, to add uh, further more on this slide, actuals in realistic, <coughs> when you go visit any hospital, any hotels, you have these housekeeping trolleys. Generally, these housekeeping trolleys are pushed towards these exit doors. And the person, the housekeeping is doesn't know the importance of the fire exit, which is what you see on an image. Similarly, we were doing a fire audit. 
it's like a five star hospital wonderful everything nice but when i saw an exit which is full of you know the water tank uh, small water bags are there trolleys are there surprising that they have they do not able to identify who kept it why they kept it now if there's a camera and you mark this as a very important area if any object come and spark there it should it should trigger an alarm to the security or the fire officer that fire exit is blocked you know there's an incident where eight people died in kolkata because the fire exit was locked through a chain and you know they could not open and they, they could find eight charred body at this exit site imagine if there's a camera there cameras are there you know why they have a camera near the exit point in hospital they feel the patient escaping without paying the bill they use this uh, <laughs> fire exit this is quite common right. you know in hospital they monitor all these fire exits uh, to make sure that patient are there and then i guess sometimes they lock it and in the hotel you know they have third party walking into the hotel into the room at night by using this fire exit part and there is a camp because of this reason they have a camera not because they want to see how secure is the fire exit so today the uh, uh, the, the rea- in reality fire exit that is there in most of the places most of the building either it is there there's a poster which covers the saying that it is a fire exit door or they have trolleys like this and you know not allowing people to exit in emergency so this a camera you know computer vision can help the fire officer the security officer all the administrator to know whether their exit is blocked this is a very very important one is people counting yes how many people are exited how many people come in second is is the path is clear for exit correct yeah. definitely dominic i think uh, you made a good point and uh, probably i'll touch upon that in the next slide as well uh, but to ensure that this coverage when we see, speak of this coverage the cameras and analytics on top of these cameras th- this is a more of a safety call it's not a budgetary call you know that, that's what we need to keep in mind that we we are looking at saving the lives of the people when and avoiding incidences uh, that are dangerous you know for human life so that, that's what we need to keep in mind and when you um, uh, made this uh, point of you know exit signs Uh, are the exit paths uh, people entering through the exit path that's something definitely we need to track and that's uh, we mentioned that is frequent or unauthorized usage of exit door so meant for exit not for entry and if by any time we see any any person entering through the exit path we can immediately alert uh, people so you can see how frequently that is happening you can do an analysis and why that is happening maybe it's more convenient for people to enter from there because it makes it easy you want to take a smoke break go from there come in from there so is that how it is used or whatever is be the thing then you know you will be able to analyze that better through through that monitoring of entry exits are being used for entry uh, we also need to ensure we can monitor the workings of these exit signs whether the uh, fire exits uh, are the signs are correctly uh, there or not like whether they are glowing or not especially when there is power outage for example still they need to be glowing so we can still train the system to detect that they are functioning correctly or not whether the exit paths are if there are defined exit path whether those are lit properly or not that also can be uh, detected and tracked we can also track the movement of these hazardous material you now because computer uh, vision algorithms can be trained to detect and recognize specific objects and are relevant to safety also like for example uh, we spoke about exit signs whether they are glowing or not it can also identify the presence or absence of fire extinguishers at specific places so if that is removed for example then we should be able to immediately um, bring it to the attention that these fire exits are uh, fire uh, extinguishers are missing So it, it helps in ensuring the compliance and uh, you know with the safety regulations also and enables quick access to the resources when we really need them at that point of time and obviously it can also track the ppe we speak about ppe in different uh, setups or scenarios so it can detect the you know people whether they are actually following the right procedures whether having the safety goggles or not whether they are wearing the prote- protective clothing or not all that can also be done so this is why the incident is happening it all computer vision can also help with post incident analysis as well not only while the incident is happening but you know post incident uh, analysis by analyzing the footage 
providing valuable insights uh, you know with, uh, understanding the sequence of events uh, how it happened exactly identifying potential causes or points of origin and and improving fire prevention strategies for the future because that's how uh, we can uh, use the data that we gather after the incidents also one is the threat deterrent you know these are the blockage of fire exits uh, detection immediately misuse of the uh, you know fire exits uh, our hazardous material all this helps us a deterrent so we we attack it in multiple aspects one is the idea is to deter uh, the threat first of all so this works as a deterrent when the incident happens what is the action that we take how we can help in that and after the incident post incident what can we do uh, in terms of helping with the analysis so those are the three aspects in which uh, the computer vision and solutions uh, can be put to use uh, and are being put to use yeah. this is this is where um, uh, you know our solution with uh, cloud enablement gives you a lot of advantage because uh, you know for the notifications with the various kind of notifications when the alarm happens uh, not just in the command control but sending those notifications via sms uh, email and also whatsapp uh, quick whatsapp messages so all these things can be put together in uh, you know the deterrent uh, scenarios uh, live events when they happen it can be notified with all of them and uh, together with the live feed uh, you know, so that 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 notification system is already existing with us, and this is that uh, notification system. One is on the on the command center aspect of it. Whenever any uh, event is triggered, like for example, a blockage is detected, the fire exit, you will get a notification here uh, immediately, along with the live view of the particular camera popping up, uh, so that you don't have to really again open up which camera, etc. So you will get an image immediately uh, of that event that gets triggered along with the live view of that particular camera so you can immediately look at it and then take appropriate action that is required so there is an action option there uh, wherein you can note down the action that is taken maybe you've informed or you take uh, or you escalate it for example to the superior because it's not in our control you see it multiple times the the trolleys are being kept you escalate it to the senior uh, manager and then who will probably percolate it down and take appropriate actions but still you will note down what is the action taken Either you have escalated it or you actually acted upon it. So all these events uh, have multiple statuses, like there is a pending event which needs to be um, uh, looked at, reviewed. And then there is a flagged event, which is basically an event that is escalated to, this, uh, to the next level for action and then approved, which is basically after finally closing that event. So you track the responses to the events that get triggered also and you have a possibility to review all these events if there is a possibility to export uh, the actions taken for these events over a period of time all of that the system provides you those uh, functionalities and these notifications this is what we see on the command center but as i said the event can be notified through a whatsapp image also to the respective people whoever is the specified person uh, you could send with the image um, of that uh, event that got triggered that's possible Few of other screen charts, you know, you could have um, multiple locations can be connected onto the same platform. Uh, when you're managing multiple sites, for example, all of them can be brought into the same platform. You could receive alerts from any of these locations. You can also monitor health of these all of these cameras. So you have connected multiple cameras. Are they working or not? Whether they're uh, live uh, now streaming or not so you can track the health of these cameras you can do a quick uh, search for the events you know how frequently some specific event has occurred in the last six months how many times did we get uh, uh, the you know, fire exits uh, blocking event in, in the last uh, week how many people entered through the fire exit uh, so those kind of uh, you know, uh, search you can do quickly for events uh, you can track those events uh, number of events that have happened so overall, it, it's basically a platform that provides you um, uh, reuse possibility of existing infrastructure because you don't need to change uh, any camera. So with existing cameras, you will be able to bring them into the platform for analysis and all the analytics, whatever built in analytics are available. They can be immediately put to use, but uh, additional system training is possible uh, because it can be customized the, all the ai can be customized for specific needs or specific anomaly detections etc it's possible and we don't work in silos you know it, it's a, a platform that works seamlessly in an integrated manner we have well-defined apis uh, the application programming interfaces which enable you to connect like for example you can sound a hooter alarm automatically when, when the fire is detected or it could uh, send out a notification to another third party system similarly we can receive notifications from third party systems as well so we have apis um, well defined apis for that 
we work as a technology partner, uh, not just uh, one uh, camera or CCTV uh, vendor, but work in partnership uh, to ensure that uh, we, we work to uh, ensure you we help you in, in the work that you do. So with that, I will end the presentation uh, and we can open up for any questions and then uh, have the discussion going forward. Yeah, uh, well, I'm requesting the participants to raise your hand. They're down. If you look at the raise your hand, those who raise the hand are probably welcome you to uh, talk on live and talk to them. We already have a few questions. Uh, uh, there i will uh, take a few questions later i'll go for a live interaction so feel free be there uh, please be there with the mic uh, ready i will take up the question answer uh, that is there here on desktop yeah uh, I see the computer vision yeah. uh, able to replace the smoke detector in next 10 years down the line uh, this i would like to answer it cannot, it cannot replace the uh, smoke detector. You know, there are smoke detectors, you require above the fall ceiling in a narrow lane. So you can't have cameras in that, you know. So, and uh, spot detector and aspiration will continue and it is a safety requirement. That will continue, it's the camera vision or a, uh, the camera is just an add-on feature to ensure that you know, uh, it's add value, that's all. You know, and also it helps the evacuation method. You now, if you've seen the slide where you can have a open the graphic, give the link to the firefighter or a fire department, you can re you know, review the whole situation, what is, what at what level the fire is spreading, that's all. But cannot replace smoke detector, even if it is 25 years, but as a fire uh, an, an expert, I would recommend that replace that with all the cameras. <laughs> yeah, in a lighter vein, I would like to say we don't mind a smoke detector in the bedroom, but not a camera, right? So obviously there are things that you would like uh, to use and, and similar way in the outdoor environment, I can't put a smoke detector. I need to use a computer vision for that. So there are cases where, you know, which one is better for use. So uh, Soumya, uh, uh, Srini is in Delhi uh, today. I don't know how long is there. Is here. But demo is something different, okay? Uh, it is not a kind of uh, where you put a camera and put up a fire and show the demo and all that. It's a teller when you need to study whether you have a, you have the cost, you have a budget to do that development and what extent you want to see. So all this, you know, when you, if you missed my introduction in the beginning, you can really identify anything that you wish to because artificial intelligence uh, it's like a brain. You can tell them what it need to detect, what action to be taken. So if you say this volume of you know, fire, a uh, smoke to be detected, it will definitely detect. There's no question of will it, why do I need it? But this is something that you need to study whether you have that much of budget. I'll leave it to you, uh, uh, Srini, to answer the question. Yeah, that's um, a very valid point, uh, Dominic. You know, we do get a lot of requirements in a lot of different areas. Uh, one of the uh, ones that I discussed with you last week, uh, the uh, uh, you know one that uh, high-end um, you know uh, 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 electric substation, one thirty-three kV. That uh, you know I think it is a big one. So they want to monitor the sparks or the uh, you know uh, the pattern of uh, uh, the lightning kind of a thing that comes out of that. Uh, with the sound, so they are saying that you know how far it is uh, spreading and how much it is the volume. Those things need to be identified. Yes, with the computer vision, we can train the system and then do it. Uh, but like you said, uh, what is the cost factor? What is the uh, you know development uh, effort that is required? We will definitely you know uh, give the budget records and then uh, also give you the analysis of uh, you know timelines that takes to develop and also. Uh, give you when it can be implemented, you know, with all the things. So that definitely is possible. You know, most of the requirements that we get are the real world scenarios. It's not like anything, you know, guesswork because the customers are always facing something that they want to solve and we are here to work on those. I have two uh, two uh, two participants raised their hand. I think Ashok Kumar Das, as he entered, he was uh, putting a put away. Ashok uh, Kumar, if you are there, uh, uh, if you are able to speak, you are most welcome. I allow you to speak. Are you there, Ashok Kumar?
Ashok Kumar, can you hear me? Okay, I'll move on to Bala. Shankar Bala, you want to talk to uh, Srinya Ramsi? You can unmute and uh, probably you can speak. You can uh, your your speaker is uh, muted, so you can probably talk to them with unmute. Okay, I'll move on to the next question. Uh, what about the false alarm by computer vision? Uh, there's no question of uh, false alarm here. Over to Vamshi. See, uh, I think uh, this we discussed during the presentation. Uh, I also that they. We cannot say there will be zero false alarms. There will uh, be because the smoke, especially when you look at smoke and fire detection, not talking about other areas. Right? So when we look at that, uh, there are various types of smokes, the patterns vary, etc. So there could be definitely possibility of false alarms. The accuracy levels, we can't say more than uh, 90%, 99% like that, like, unlike for a facial recognition or a people counting scenario. Those are different versus um, fire and smoke detection is a different ball game altogether. So we, we need to be conservative about our expectations uh, from this uh, at the moment, uh, as far as the technology is concerned, as well as the practicality is concerned. So there may be false alarms, but to what extent we can live with that is a call that we need to take. So are we can we afford to miss one actual event uh, because we try to do too much and, and then uh, try to eliminate false alarms completely to zero. So that's a call that we need to take. It's a more of a strategic call than, than anything else. So that's how I would like to put it that way. We need to run the system for a while and see how many you're getting, how much we can optimize. That's a, that's a something that the tuning that we need to do uh, over a period of time. So, so Isam is asking, can we get alerts via call or SMS and detected fire or smoke? Yeah, I already I already answered to that. Um, you know, all those um, live uh, uh, you know response uh, alerts will be sent with the notification okay. SMS, email, and WhatsApp. And if there is any uh, other mode that is required, that you know, if there is any Telegram or anything, we can also do that. Wonderful. So Abdul Azim, yes, we'll share the PPT in the record in a video record mode. What is the lifespan of ca camera? Lifespan depends on the manufacturer that uh, you got it installed. They, Durang doesn't sell camera or unless it is very specialized application. Um, the, you know, probably they can, but uh, you can use any camera, any make. And if the quality is good, yes, of course. So I think there is an associated question to that, uh, you know, about the lifespan of the camera. There is somebody. Anonymous attendee has uh, put a, a question saying competition with the equation uh, kind of uh, CCTV manufacturers in this fire detection. They are already outpaced uh, many players in intrusion sec sector and uh, you know sector based AI. Okay, so here is the thing. What Dominic has also just mentioned, I'll reiterate it. We are not a hardware company, so to say. We are agnostic to hardware. That's why in the in the presentation when Vamshi is running the presentation, he clearly mentioned, and I also made it point. Uh, some of the cameras, fire uh, resistant cameras, and then thermal cameras, those are all of different manufacturers. We are a software based solution which works with the, every kind of cameras that are in the field, if, be it existing cameras or the future cameras. Okay, so. If there is a edge-based analytics that are being running with uh, some hardware provider, uh, you know that's a different story. But most of the time, edge analytics are uh, low-end analytics in terms of their uh, capability because the onboard camera there will be very less hardware provisioning can be done for the AI. So what we do is a near AI, near uh, you know uh, edge that is on-premises. Uh, analytics running with the graphic, um, uh, you know, servers are on the cloud with the bustable, um, you know, graphic um, uh, infrastructure that we have, uh, GPU infrastructure that we have. So there is a trade clear trade-off where the accuracies and the false alarms are a completely different world uh, when it comes to onboarded camera analytic versus, uh, you know, uh, server-based or cloud-based. So, so to say, these these two are different worlds different environments. So if there is an existing system that you are using, if you want to re-enhance it with a better solution that we are ready for that. And we are a completely customized solution. It is not that camera is doing something and it is doing that forever. We are taking the feed from the camera 
and doing analysis at the algorithm level, at the cloud level, which can be customized, which can be enhanced, which can be modified for your future needs without changing the camera infrastructure. So our important point that we are trying to mention is buy good cameras, okay? We are not saying that, you know, you buy something which is not giving you a good feed. Buy good cameras, and then we do the analysis on top of it. That's how, you know, we do the solution. So basically, Durank is a software developer, uh, analytic developer, so you could uh, probably, uh, there are some chat box I can see, they want to do POC, they would like to do, Ravi is asking, Ravi, you can see the mail IDs, uh, email IDs of Mrs. Srini and Mamshi, so you can provide them more details and there'll be some few questions that they'll send it. If that meets uh, the requirement, uh, then they will get back to you. So. I would request uh, Ravi AG so to note down the email ID Lakshmi has uh, shared on the chat box. And uh, so uh, I'll go back uh, to Anand. Possible to monitor the fire pump operation in case pump fail to start means will it get an alert? So here is the IoT comes into this, which again, uh, Mr. Srini is uh, the company called uh, uh, Orego who does that. So they can, yes, if they can not the camera, I would say, but they have an IoT solution with sensor which can monitor the fire pump performance, whether it is whether water is there in the pump, how, how efficiently it is working, whether pump control uh, panel, whether it is in manual mode or an auto mode, this can be detected through IoT solution. So where they have they can do it. So Ashok Kumar is uh, very interestingly asking. Can we use Durang Vision platform in ESD yards and substation to monitor faults and theft cases? Of course, I think it's an interesting question. Absolutely, about it. absolutely. And uh, you know, we have those requests from different state governments also. We are, you know, slowly started working through uh, substation uh, monitoring and substation uh, protection safety is one of the primary thing for the uh, you know video analytics. Uh, whether it is the people intruding into the areas and then uh, stealing the uh, you know, copper wires or whatever that is the material that is dumped on the, you know, uh, substations uh, and, you know, tampering with the substation things and people moving around where they are not supposed to be in the zones which are critically dangerous. Those things monitoring on a live basis. All these things are pretty much possible, not just for one, one substation. If the DISCOM got like 500 substations, just make it as a centralized opportunity to monitor and proactively inform to the substation manager plus at the central location and also quick response team in that zone. So all these things are possible with the system. And uh, you know, uh, Mr. Anand, we are more than interested in uh, you know discussing with you. Please leave an email to us and then we will uh, take it forward. Yeah, thank you, uh, Srini. Sunil Tripathi, how this camera discriminate between the smoke and the fire, integrated fire alarm and protection system. Uh, the second question I can answer, first, how this camera discriminate between smoke and the fire? Would like to answer, Vamshi? Again, just Vamshi, just a point. It's not the camera, it's our algorithm. So camera is only an eye, you know, it doesn't have a brain. So all that, that comes out of the camera is what we take as a feed, and we do the analysis at the, uh, you know, uh, our server level. Vamshi, please go ahead and yeah, take that. Exactly. I think uh, that answers it. So basically, we take the feed from the camera, analyze it to see uh, what is um, what is there in the field of view of the camera. And once the smoke pattern or, a fire, uh, is, or the flame is detected, uh, an event is triggered in the system. And this event is notified to whoever needs to be notified, if it's a person via email, WhatsApp, etc. If it's a third party system uh, or some other application, uh, we can obviously send out um, automated message from the system through a API call. So we can push that event uh, through a push mechanism, push that event details of what which camera, which location, and uh, you know what, what is the event that is detected along with the image that can be pushed to a third party system and then they can take uh, appropriate action within that system so there are yes, APIs uh, yes sorry go ahead uh, Sunil uh, here it's again the combination of what uh, Srini said right all the CCTV cameras that you see just, they are just an eye they have no brains so what Durang does they put brain into the uh, software and uh, I try to 
tell you what it's saying. You know, you can uh, men or a woman or an object or whatever. So these are the one which they develop and uh, give it you as a solution. But IoT, when the second question is how to integrate with fire protection, there it the comes A and IoT comes into place. If you have that, yes, it can be perfectly monitored the entire fire protection system. Uh, it gives you all the parameters that is required through IoT. So in which standard end up, you know, the NFA doesn't talk about this camera monitoring and all that. It doesn't cover uh, under any NFPA codes. Uh, with this, uh, I think we have taken all the question. There is uh, no hand has been raised. Uh, Ashok Kumar Das, I wish you would have spoken to them. I think you had you put up a valuable, uh, very, very interesting uh, Okay, Ashok Kumar is from the... And Jayesh, I think uh, J Mr. Jayesh is asking a question. Is the integration with existing uh, CCTV camera feasible or it depends on the OEM or specific uh, type of cameras is a must for the requirement? Um, Mr. Jayesh, I think, uh, you know, we made it very uh, uh, elaborate on that. We work with all existing cameras, whether they are IP or the old uh, analog cameras. For us, feed is, feed is important, not the camera functionality. Having said that, we also caution you, like some of the areas we do recommend to go for a high-end cameras. I'm not talking about the brand of the cameras, but any brand of the cameras, but uh, the cameras should be like, you know, for the fire paths and fire exits and some other places, we do prefer uh, uh, fire-resistant cameras so that, you know, you, you don't have uh, the disadvantage of losing those camera infrastructure at the time of a need. So that that's the only recommendation. But otherwise, uh, you know, we are we are not uh, dependent on the cameras per se. Yeah, and there's one more question. Etila Narendra is asking, what is the minimum infrastructure needed for the existing system? That is, the existing CCTV they have to implement this technology, and minimum number of cameras on the floor uh, per square feet uh, required. I think, um, Narendra, I think you have their mail IDs. Uh, if you look down, uh, you can write to Mamshi or Srini. Uh, they would like to understand more. You know, They may require more detail. And if you can also mention the application, what kind of uh, environment uh, that you're looking, whether it's a hotel, hospital, or warehouse, let them know. They will be able to answer to that question. Any other question that we are missing here? Uh, uh, J, J, okay. What are the approximate cost of the 100 camera smoke detector? And so, this is uh, the I'm seeing, uh, as I said, they don't sell camera, you know, it is a software that built into the uh, your uh, DVR or the NVR and it gives you this. So, uh, this is and again, I tell you, it cannot replace the smoke detector. It only enhances the safety, enhances the detection system by having this solution. We will, uh, we can discuss offline and then uh, give a quote in case if their, uh, you know, their requirement is, uh, you know, specific. Uh, you know, please send over an email uh, to our email address or please post your email ID. We'll, uh, you know, reach out to you. So uh, wonderful to have this interaction. So we'll come back. Uh, fire safety is my passion. That's how uh, we are uh, landed in this. And I don't see anybody in uh, India that covered on a webinar to talk about how to enhance the fire and safety. I'm so proud that we did that way through Durang. And uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, many more things that we can do and we'll be coming, we'll come back with to you again uh, with more uh, solutions that we can, uh, uh, by using the VMS, what more we can do. Uh, add to the facility to make you know security uh, security hundred uh, percent you know uh, fail proof uh, when it comes to camera monitoring and safety. Of course, we discussed. So we have covered almost all construction, warehouse, hospital, healthcare, pharma. Now we have covered uh, fire and safety, and I'm sure there's plenty more opportunity for us to talk and see how drug VMS can you know, can be used in your applications. So those who wish to know more and more and uh, the previous uh, uh, webinar recording, please write to Lakshmi or uh, write to Vamshi Srini and we are here to help you and support you. Our objective is make Bharat a Surakshit Bharat. 
and maximize your CCTV. If you see behind uh, Steeny, the logo says, do more with surveillance. Don't just sit with the surveillance, do more with the surveillance. So thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, my friends. Thank you, Srini, for joining from Delhi. Thank you, Vamshi, uh, for joining from Hyderabad. I am from Bangalore, three different cities. And what a technology, the virtual platform bringing us together on one screen. Lovely to have you all. Have a safe weekend. Look forward to see you again. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dominic. Bye.